Let's say you have a message that you would like to get out to the public and reach a, as broad an audience as you can, but you don't happen to own a major media platform or really have the skills to, to, to spread a message in that way. What can you do? Well, you can try and make use of the, the media outlets that do exist and, and do so by writing a release that will uh, hopefully generate some interest and get them to run the story for you. So in this video, I just want to talk briefly about writing press releases and give you some basic uh, framework for what is involved and what should be included and, and not included in these uh, types of writings for media and in terms of writing press releases. So let's start at the beginning and talk about the basics. First of all, you have to make sure that what you're sharing is worthwhile. You have to make it worthwhile for the media organization. Again, you can go back and review some previous videos. We talked about this, but the media is their objective is to make money and they do that by reaching audiences so that they can sell ads and do things like that. So they want to know, is this worthwhile for our audience? Does this matter to our audience? Why does this matter? Why do people need to know this? Or why should they need this information? Why should they have this information? And then why should that bump other potential stories? Why would that be better than other things that they could be running on their, their platform uh, instead? So um, we have to figure out, is this worthwhile and make sure that when we're sharing information on a press release, that it is for something worthwhile and that the media is going to see it as worthwhile. So uh, whatever you're doing, make sure that it's worthwhile for them and for their audiences. Next, you need, really need to know your audience and really your audiences plural. That's why there's an S at the end of that. So there are a couple different audiences here. First of all, well, we, we think about the, the, the public as our audience, but the first audience that we need to reach is the media themselves. And we need to, to get through that. The media are what we call gatekeepers of information. They're the ones who decide what goes on air or doesn't, what gets printed in their newspaper or magazine or on their website or doesn't. Right? They're the gatekeepers of this information. They decide what the public knows about. As the old saying goes, they don't necessarily tell, the, tell us what to think, but they tell us what to think about. And they do that through this gatekeeping function. So our first audience really is the media. And that involves not only what we're writing about and that we're writing about something worthwhile, but that we're doing so in a way that's going to make it easier for them to publish and be involved in and develop those relationships with the media contacts because the media is ultimately people that are running that. So they're the first audience because they're the gatekeepers of this information. So we need to do what we can to make it uh, appealing for them to make sure it meets those those news values and uh, that it's structured in the right way. That's going to make their jobs easier and so forth. So our first audience is the media themselves, the, the people uh, you know involved in making those decisions as to what gets published and what doesn't. Then our next audience is the actual public, right? And so we need to remember, again, what's worthwhile to the public. We need to know who our audience is. So there's what we want to say and what they're interested in. And in between there somewhere, hopefully there's some crossover and relevance, right? That, that what we have to say is something that they're going to care about and be interested in. So we have to know our audience and know how to reach them and, and what's going to be uh, hopefully important to them as much as possible. Then I, I kind of have alluded to this a couple of times that we need to make it easy for the outlets. They have a lot of information coming in. They have a lot of work to do, a lot of things going on, just like we all do. So when we send them a release or we send them information, we want to make sure that it's that it's not only worthwhile, but it, it's structured in the right way. And just whatever we can do to make it easy for them to to get the information that they need to, to put that story together and to run with it. Right. Um, ideally, it's going to be written well. It's going to be written in the proper format. It's going to be relevant. It's going to have all those key words and things. It's just going to make their job easier. The easier it is for them to to publish or produce that story, the more likely they are to do it. Right? And just like any of us, they don't want extra work if they can help it. So whatever we can do to make it easier for them will be uh, fantastic and will help us get our story out there. One of the things we can do along those lines is use the inverted pyramid uh, structure for media writing. A whole other video on that that you can check out, um, but we, we should use that inverted pyramid structure where we, we start with the lead and this, I mean, we should be writing in this format with the lead and then followed by the body and then finally the tail, because that's how most media writing uh, happens. That's, that's the structure that most media outlets use. It's going to be familiar to them. It's going to help them organize the story, even if they make some changes or whatever. It's going to be in the proper order for them to find what they need to find. And so we ought to be writing using the inverted pyramid structure. OK, okay. so let's take a look real quick at a sample, um, just generic press release. Okay. This is just, a, a, you know, has no real information in it, but 
Um, so this is just a sample release. Uh, so let's identify a couple of things here that are important as we're putting together a release like this. First of all, it ought to be identified as a press release, not just a memo. I mean, don't just let people think it's an email or a memo or whatever. Identify it specifically as a press release so that they know what the function of that document again is. Again, make it as easy as possible for them. Identify it very easily, very quickly as a press release so they know exactly where to file it and what to do with it. You also want to make it easy for them by putting contact information at the top. If there's something going on here, if they need to follow up or whatever, have that information readily available and let them know that contact information. You want to put a date on the release uh, as far as when you're sending it to them. That's important to, to know when they got it so they know if this is current or, or whatever. So be sure you have the release date itself as in the date you're sending it uh, to them uh, that, that's listed on there. You also want to clarify when this information can be released to the public. Oftentimes, organizations will send um, a press release and say this is for publication on on or after this date, which may be a week or two down the line. Um, so they're sending it out early to give people a chance to follow up on it and put together their information or whatever. If it's for immediate release, that's fine. You can you can indicate that. But if it's for you know, a later release, you need to say that very clearly. Whatever it is, again, make their job easier by putting that very uh, plainly in the in the release. What's the date of release for this information to the public? OK, and we need a headline. We talked about headlines in a different video as well, um, but uh, you want to you want to have a clear, concise headline, not more than six or seven words that really summarizes the entire thing in just a few words. Okay, so focus on keywords, focus on conciseness and clarity there in the headline. Then the rest of this information, really, we do want to focus on the inverted pyramid. We want to use the inverted pyramid for this focusing on the lead and the body than the tail. Um, and in doing so, we're going to start with the most critical information in that opening paragraph. Who, what, when, where, why, how, uh, the most critical information goes in that lead paragraph, the opening paragraph. So be sure you have all the really critical pertinent details right up front. If they only have X amount of space or X amount of time to talk about this, this is what they should focus on. Make sure all of that information is in the lead. Then after that, you can continue to provide background. You can provide quotes and statistics and other items that can be used to offer context and fill in that story and provide uh, a more robust, sorry, a more robust um, uh, information for that story. So you can you can provide all of that as well. Okay. Uh, then you want to give a background on the project and on the organization that is specific um, and relevant to the purpose of that release. So not just general information about the organization that's going to come, but Specifically, what did people need to know about the background of this project or this organization? If you have any of that, you can add that paragraph then. You do want to add a boilerplate boilerplate organizational paragraph. Most organizations already have this. It's just a, a tag at the end of it that says this company is this was established and whatever. It gives this some really basic um, foundational details about the organization itself. So again, boilerplate meaning it's just the same uh, every time you have one of these things. And then it is courteous to add, I think, uh, an additional tag at the end that says for more information, contact this person at this at this phone number or email or whatever. So you can add that on at the end just as a courtesy. You've already got the contact information at the top, but you can also add it there just so it's really clear for that uh, media organization to know where they can um, follow up and how they can get more information if they need it. Okay. okay. So as you can see, when we write press releases, this is really about um, uh, understanding how the system works and how everybody has a role. And so we need to structure our releases in a way that makes it easier for the people on the other end who are following up on this with the media and in their organization, make it as easy as possible for them. That's going to give us the greatest uh, odds of having that release picked up and used as a story when they know that it's relevant to their audience and going to be interesting to them when they know that it's structured well and going to be easy for them to kind of put together. Those are things that are going to make it more likely for our release to be actually used. Then. If you have questions about news releases or anything else, please feel free to email me. Um, otherwise, I hope this has been informative for you to understand just the basic structure and, and foundational elements of a press release so that we have the greatest likelihood of getting a release used when we send it to media outlets.